it's not about art at the moment. It's, yeah. a, it's about helping somebody out because they need help. Yeah. And that's like, if we can help them out in regards to a group or if I can help them out personally, that's my gift to them. Do you know what I mean? That's what makes me feel good and that's, that's what lights my fire like. Right, so it's episode 16. I'm here with Matthew Creel from Tidy Butt. How's it going, mate? You good? Yeah, good, thank you, buddy. Thanks, thanks for coming, mate. Yeah, yeah, I'm good, I'm good. Yeah, yeah, glad Brilliant. to have you. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity, but it's uh, great to be on. Thank you very much. That's all right, mate. So you've done a bit of a crazy challenge, uh, climbing Everest on your stairs at home. How, well, how did you come about to want to do that? Uh, it, it happened about six months ago, mate, they did. Um, they were in the first lockdown. I was coming down the stairs in the house. And it just came to me and I said to the missus, I said, uh, I wonder how many times I'd have to walk up and down them to climb the equivalent of Kilimanjaro. <laughs> and after a bit of Googling and a bit of messing around, we worked out it was 1,684 1, times. Really? And two weeks later, I was cracking on with it. So <laughs> and, and ever since I'd done that one, um, the Everest one was just playing on my mind and it'd go away for a couple of weeks and then it'd come back and then it'd go away for a couple of weeks. And then they come back, so we worked out some some math and found out I'd have to do it um, 2,984 times, that one. And again, two weeks later, they announced the, the lockdown. So I thought, well, that's going to get me through lockdown. <laughs> so I thought I got a week of just nothing, then I'll do that. And then I got another week, and then we're back out of lockdown. So it gave me something to focus on during lockdown. So there was no like big training for it? It was uh, just like... Kind of spare at the moment. Yeah, it was a bit off the cuff, to be honest, but it was just a case of... And, and the thing is, with, with these type of challenges, I find I don't like to think about them too much. I just like to crack on with them because yeah. I'll talk myself out of it otherwise. I think it's all mentality as well, and it? Getting through it, I bet like you went through some ups and downs during that. Definitely, but I learned a lot about myself during the first one. Um, but during the second one, it was like... I started 6 o'clock on a Saturday morning, and... Excuse me. And the f I was doing them in sets of 100. So I, I marked it out on my board. I got right. I got 30 sets of 100. It was the only way I thought I, I could get through it. And my first 100 was the <laughs> worst I've ever felt in my life, I swear <laughs> to God. It was all like my body just said, mate, you are fucking taking the piss. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, we are not doing this again, right? And we are not only doing it again. You've got to do it for double the time, right? So it just, for the first, I'd say, I'd done that for the first 200. The th the three hundredth flight, I thought, oh, I'm into it now, brand new. I got it, <laughs> and I just went crash again. So like, until I reached the two thousand mark, mate, it was just a, a brain fuck. To be fair, it was just yeah, uh, you're getting over the hump, was it? Yeah, it was. It, to be fair, like, physically I was okay, but mentally I think because I was focusing on the finish rather than just right, just get through the next couple of, of flights. Let's yeah. get through the next step. I was thinking. 35 hours, 35 hours, 35 That's hours. That's mad. Did, did you sleep through? Yeah, did you I, have a I, sleep in between? I managed to get about um, three, three and a half hours in in the end. So, and I, I remember the point, like my missus went to bed because I'd be fair, if it wasn't for my missus, I wouldn't be able to do it because every every set of unread, what I would do, I, I would have a 10 minute break. So I'd come into the living room, she'd have the ice ready for me. She'd have my nutrition ready for me. She'd have bagels, whatever I fancied or whatever, where I, I could get down at, at the time. And it was about 5 to 12, and she was like, love, I'm off to bed. And I swear to God, but I felt my soul leave my body. Right? <laughs> and I was just like, oh, man, I'm on my own. Right? Don't do it to me. I know, the kids was in bed. Obviously, all the lights had to be turned off, so we had the, we had the hallway light on. And I, could, I had my earphones in. I couldn't sing along. I had to keep the noise down. You know what I mean? So it was just... I oh, mean, so they were just like in bed whilst you were going up yeah, and down. Yeah, was in bed. Down. But yeah, yeah, I, I couldn't expect them to stay up with me. So I was like, <laughs> guys, get on to bed and, and I'll just crack on. So I'd do another couple of sets. I'd go in, I'd have half hour, set my alarm on my phone for half hour's time. I'd get back up, do another couple of sets. And, and that's how I got through the night, really. Like, Fair I got play. up then the next day with about um, 1,900 then on... on marked off my list so as soon as I reached the 2000 mark it was just a case of right you're on your own straight yeah, now it was just a case of getting it done then you know you're going to get it done then don't yeah, you as well you've got no but, choice yeah, <laughs> yeah. certainly have no choice like you get what you it's the point of no return I suppose isn't it do you know what I mean and as soon as I walked that first flight there was no going back so I thought 
a while back, you're in it for the long haul now. I, I can relate. Like, did a 50 miler run this year with my cousin, and that was like the same sort of thing. Once you were over the halfway, it was like there's no choice now yeah. not to finish. Like, if you get injured early doors, you can kind of like. Well, you shouldn't, but you can easily make excuses for yourself, can't you? Yeah, Whereas yeah, yeah. once you're over the hump, it's like, it doesn't matter if your leg's hanging off. You've got to yeah, give no, it a go, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And like, so you, you, you're at the point where it's tough. You're, you're grinding through, you're grinding through, and then you're thinking, well, I haven't got a lot left. And then all of a sudden, like you said, you think, Bloody fuck, I'm on your home straight. And you just find that surge of energy from somewhere, don't you? Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. that placebo effect. And all of a sudden, your legs start working again. Your brain starts ticking over. You start singing along. And before you know it, like I said, I, I got to about 2,400 and I was back in the flow of it then, do you know what I mean? But it, it did take me that, that long to be able to say, right, come on, mate. But I'm pretty sure but it was all to do with seeing the, the finish line, to be fair. <laughs> it's a strange thing, isn't it? Because you literally, earlier on, I don't know about, like, when I got to, like, the 40 mile mark, say, I did my fastest mile, like, my 40th mile was my fastest mile, which made no sense whatsoever. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's pacing for the rest of it and then just had this surge, like you said, you can see the finish line, it's like, got to go for it now but like a 38 miles like yeah just wouldn't have thought it was ever even there like yeah. I didn't even know it was in the tank but yeah it's a strange one that is but then yeah, like, I, I think I read I was I was reading um the art of resilience by uh, Ross Edgley yeah and he's just an absolute savage and he I haven't read the book but I've seen I've seen him on the Joe Rogan podcast oh, like it's yeah, insane mate, oh, some of some of the things he's done is craziness in fairness to him and they reckon like 40 percent in and you've you, you you think to yourself right I, I I'm done I can't take no more and you're only 40 percent of your capacity there's just so much more left do you know what I mean it's just your body it's sorry is your mind playing tricks on you do you know what I mean your, the, the mind will give up way before the body I suppose yeah I think I think that's what David Goggin says as well isn't it like yeah. everyone gives up a 40 yeah. percent they never leave yeah. it all out there I know but it's so hard to get over that though isn't it yeah, definitely yeah, like you said about learning a lot about yourself, you do when you're doing these challenges. It's a different thing, isn't it? Definitely, mate. I think once once you're on your own in, in it's a lonely old place, isn't it? And do you know what I mean? Like you said, when when you're running with your mates or whatever, and you're having the crack, but it's the same with, with, with these fighters. Once I, once the cage door shuts, do you know what I mean? You're on your own and working through the night, going up and down our stairs. I was on my own, and I was thinking, oh man, what are you doing? Do you know what I mean? I quite. Could have easily chucked the towel in at any time, do you know what I mean? But it's just that, that resilience and that, that persistence to be able to think, well, I ain't going to be able to look at myself if I, in the mirror if I don't complete this, do you know what I mean? And, and the, reg the regret would have been a lot worse, it would have actually, made. than, than uh, getting through it in the end. Like So yeah, yeah. I, I'm glad I completed it in the end. I don't know about you, but, well, maybe share with me some of the things that you tell yourself when you're doing it. Do you, Have you got, like, things you repeat to yourself when I, you're doing I, it? I got a specific thing, so, like, 20 years ago, I got diagnosed with um, a heart condition during a rugby game, so I collapsed during a rugby game. Um, I found out I had a, uh, suffered some heart failure. And when times are hard, I, I always remember, I, I always go back, and I can remember it like it was yesterday. I remember the surgeon, said, the cardiologist saying to me, he said, Math, there's, there's not a lot else I can do for you. Do you know what I mean? He said, we will have to come back in a couple of years' time. You will have to have an operation. But as far as exercise and that type of stuff is concerned, he said, just take over. Don't go too far. And, and I can remember the conversation like it was yesterday. So when times are tough or when I did think that I haven't got any more left, that's one of them negative things that I always revert back to. And I can switch it into a positive and it works wonders for me, mate. whether I'm out on a run, whether I'm out on a walk, whether I'm doing these type of challenges. I just go back to that moment where somebody said to me that take your time, you ain't really going to be able to, exceed yourself past a certain yeah. um, capacity or whatever, do you know what I mean? And, and it always resonates with me, mate, to be honest. And, and, and I'm not really sure why, because it's, it wasn't until, I'd say, back 12 months ago that I really adopted that mindset, to be fair, do you know what I mean? Because I was always one of them ones that somebody say, right, you can't do that, mate, do you know what I mean? And I think to myself, well, maybe I can, but oh, fuck it, I'll have a go anyway. Yeah. But it's just that one thing that works for me now, so when times get hard... I definitely think back at that, and and that certainly went through my mind a few times over the weekend. That's for sure. I think you've got to have it in there, haven't you? Yeah, like I, I tell myself like the pain is temporary, but the results permanent, isn't it? Yeah. And, you know, when like this challenge you've done now, it's written down, it's done. No yeah. one can take it away from you, can they? And yeah. like, yeah, if you'd given up at the point where you felt like you were done at the, on the day. You'd be kicking yourself right now, wouldn't you? Oh, and certainly, but the regret would have been a lot worse. That's for sure. Yeah, you know I mean, it, like 
even the thought of not being able to finish is send the shivers down my spine. You know, yeah. thinking, well, you're in. And I think like there's so many negative things talking about social media and that type of stuff. But once you're accountable to something, so like you post something on social media and you say, right, I'm getting this done. You've got to fucking commit to it, man. Do you know what I mean? Because, You've got no choice. Yeah, yeah. It, and it's a good o- accountability tool as well, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? People are on there, they see them what you're doing. And like, I'm a big advocate for, for exercise in regards to improving mental health and challenging yourself and that type of stuff. And how can I lead something if I'm not leading from the front? Like, do you know what I mean? And, and that's, 100%. that's the way I'm trying to trying to live my life, I suppose, and and get through these these type of things and these challenging times. It is is obviously trying to inspire other people, but also inspire myself at the time. Yeah, yeah. So that, that kind of leads into, obviously, you started a group on Facebook, Tidy Bat. Yeah, yeah. Which is uh, like mental health support group, I suppose. Is it? Is that? Yeah, basically, mate. Yeah, it's. Um, like I said, I, I lost a promising rugby career when I was younger. And if I'm totally honest with you, I didn't really deal with that, if I'm totally honest with you. And I post, I, I put it to the back of my mind. Um, rather than deal with the issues, it, it was just festering subconsciously in, in the back of my mind for the past 20 years. Do you know what yeah. I mean? It wasn't until, like I said, recently that I've actually sat down and thought to myself, well, why do I feel this way? Why am I having these thoughts? Why am I having these feelings? And it all kind of points back to that. Um, and... I said to my missus, at my lowest point, I said, look, I can't be the only person feeling this way. I said, they've got to be other people. They've got to be other people. So I spoke to a really good friend of mine. Um, he knocked some designs and stuff up for me in regards to the logo and that type of stuff. And when I told him what I would do, he was like, ah, tidy work. He said, hi. So, <laughs> so we, um, the, 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 th- the main thing actually, mate, stopping me purring out was the fear of judgment. I'm not going to lie. Because I was thinking to myself, well, not many people know about my situation. And, and to be totally fair, if if I put something like this out, the first thing people are going to do is judge me. They're going to think, well, fucking hell, I didn't know that Matthew was struggling with that. Or, bloody hell, I, you wouldn't think out of him, do you know what I mean? Because I've always been quite an outgoing, spoken person, do you know what I mean? I, yeah. I've never really blended into the background. I've always been the, the one up on the dance floor and stuff, do you know what I mean? Sometimes, though, I think that's, they're the people which are silently struggling. Like yeah. it's, it's like a mask, in it? You know, you're yeah, like definitely. kind of masking how you're feeling and... Yeah, I definitely, don't know. for sure. I, I've definitely uh, been that type of person, you know, and usually, like, mask it with drink, really. I'd, my drink would be the confidence, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Which would mask, like, the problems, really, that let light underneath. And Yeah, and, and that's what one, one of the other issues in it is this. We got, we've got certain issues, but and then we start to self-medicate. So we go on to the drugs, we go on to the drink. Do you, and, and they come hand in hand, don't they? Especially our day and age now, you see... you. People are going out and they're drinking regular and that leads into certain other activities and certain other... And then before you know it, it's, it's like that compound effect, but in a positive... Uh, sorry, but in a negative way. So just as good as something can t- have that compound effect and turn into a positive, it can turn into an also turn into a negative. Yeah. And, and before you know it, like you said, people are in a, in a world of shit. Like. You don't even know what's happening though, do you? Like, I don't think at the time, for me, I didn't even realise there was an issue. Like, it's only until, like... I don't know, for me, I had a couple of months off drinking because I wanted to have a bit of a health kick for, like, no apparent reason, obviously feeling a bit crap about myself. And then, like, when the numbing was taken away, that's when, like, the true feelings rose to the surface. And it's like, fuck, you know, I haven't dealt with this for years. Yeah, like, I yeah. don't know if that's what it's like yeah, for you. Yeah, or... definitely. But, yeah, but I'm quite, I'm quite lucky, really, because when this did happen to me, I was still surrounded by a good group of friends, although I didn't say anything. And I would be out partying, like you said, you'd go out, you'd drink most weekends and you'd just live for the weekend, wouldn't you? Do yeah. you know what I mean? And like you said, it's not until you actually step back from the situation and look in from the outside and think, shit, I've, I've been like masking my thoughts and feelings for so many years with drink or going out with or relationships or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Why is everything breaking down? And it's because we haven't dealt with them, innit? They, we haven't actually sat down and dealt with the issues at hand, I suppose. Yeah, just, just numbed for years yeah. and years. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a super, super tough situation because, especially as men, we hear it so often. Like, we hear the, the thing, you've got a man up, do you know what I mean? What's the matter with you? Do you know what I mean? Come on, fucking get up and get up and go. And But when somebody's struggling like that, and especially with our, with our stigma around the whole mental health thing, I think now is is great because there's more and more people speaking about it all the time. But I sp- certainly going back a few years ago, I'd call them the dinosaurs, like which is some of the older generation. And if you like, do you know what I mean? And, and they just it's, it simply wasn't spoke about. Was it? You wouldn't speak about your mental health. 
you wouldn't help your missus with the kids. Do you know what I mean? You'd be down the pub, you'd be doing whatever you want to do. Yeah. And, that, and that was just the way it was. But I think the whole thing have just switched on his head now. And I think, especially one of the positive things to come out of, of, of this pandemic, I suppose, is that there is more? There is a lot more people now talking about their thoughts and feelings, and, and mental is, health mate. has had a massive uh, shock, shake up. Like I suppose, yeah, and it's good. Like people like yourself coming forward because, like you said, if you're that uh, like kind of standout character of your friendship group, and you you know you're always the laugh and the joke and all, if you can come out and do it, maybe it maybe shines a bit of light on someone who doesn't feel like they can. You know, yeah, and certainly, yeah. shows that if someone who maybe on the surface seems really happy and and whatnot can do it then definitely someone who's maybe not that type of character and is feeling it doesn't feel so bad coming forward you know and i think it's great like your group is obviously really positive i was having to like scan through today and stuff and like people talking about coping mechanisms and stuff on there yeah. and like yeah what what what's your like coping and, mechanisms? And that's the thing but to be honest right we we've got that group here and it's the word mental i think when people talk about mental health it's that word mental and and, and straight away we assume like people are rocking back and forth in each chair and then they got that fucking white jacket on. <laughs> you know I mean? We strap them to the beds and stuff. But I think now with with what I'm trying to create with in regards to Tidy Butt is, is, a, is a group of just relatable people that people can go online, they can see that, well, hang on, I'm not the only one feeling this way. There's hundreds and hundreds and even thousands of people feeling these same feelings, having these same thoughts as me. And even if they decide... But they don't want to comment on the group, and they don't, and they're not ready to open up yet. Although they, maybe they haven't got the confidence to open up yet, they can still read what other people are saying. They can still read comments, so there's still coping strategies and stuff on there, that, and tools that they can use in order to progress to move forward. And I think that's been one of the main positives. I think with this group is that is reached. Like I think earlier on, before I come down, we reached a thousand members. Yeah. So which, and I remember being sat on a set when I first done it with the misses, and I was like. Oh, we got 10 members, love. I said, oh, it's flying by that. You know yeah. I mean? And like w- within like six months, we're up on a thousand members now. And it's, it's a great community. And I think if we can keep um, keep everyone together, stay positive, um, keep progressing as a group, like people say to me, they say, oh, oh you've done so well. But it, it's, it's, not a, it's not about me. It's about you, the group as a whole. Do you know what I mean? I think we, as, as long as we can keep growing together, I think it, it'll be a, uh, It'll be a massive positive for the community, I think. Yeah, I think just having that on your news feed, like for the people who are in the group, just having that in your news feed of people like talking positive speak, because to a degree, I don't know like what your thoughts are, but you are what you eat, but you are what you think as well. Yeah, definitely. it's not it's not just uh, you know you you consume a load of crap on on if you're just going through the news and looking at negative stuff like you're gonna have a negative outlook on life on you and oh, well, shadow it out, yeah. go into your group and whatever and you see a load of people doing positive things you're climbing Everest on your stairs yeah. do you know what I mean uh, someone else is like come out overcome another hurdle and whatever and like just that's reading it. that just man that just I, does wonders for people and, and I think everyone's journey is different as well isn't it do you know what I mean you haven't got to climb the equivalent of Everest do you know what I mean you you've your journey could be to get out of the house. You might have been stuck in the house with crippling anxiety for the last 12 or 18 months or even six months, do you know what I mean? So just being able to get out of bed in the morning for some people is a positive thing, yeah. do you know what I mean? So I think everybody's journey is totally different. So and we, if we can support anyone in, in any way moving forward and if they can go onto the group and they can see positive influences on there, like people like Jack Shaw and, and Mason and Reese Thomas, like who we got ambassadors at the moment, Who's doing a fantastic job in raising awareness? I think if we can keep um, these guys involved and and the interaction and support from the community that we've got, I think the future is very bright, mate. To be fair, I think so as well, mate. Yeah, I think you're just going to go strength to strength and keep that support out there, and it like um, that kind of leads me into what's your vision for Tidy But in the future? Oh, I would love to. Um, so. Obviously, now we, we've been quite restricted in what we've been able to do in regards to events and stuff like that, but we've got a few um, outlined events planned for next year, so we, we would like to um, have some maybe some meditation-type meetups and some mindfulness-type kind, kind of stuff and some just some general um, talks where people get together and, 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 like, now we just have a coffee and we have a chat, you know what I mean? Um, wellness, we got some wellness walks planned now for, for later on in the year and next year. Um, we, we got plenty of stuff in the pipeline. We've got a couple of challenges as well planned for next year in regards to a, a certain bike ride. 
it could potentially be like the length of Wales and stuff like Is that. It? Yeah, that, that sounds that, fun. That, <laughs> <laughs> on that, the uh, that people can get involved with as well. Do you know what I mean? That is, is going to be like a, a, a few challenges next year that we're going to open up for everyone to be able to take part in. Whether you've, I don't know, haven't walked or, or run a key for the last, I don't know, many years, or whether you, like you said, like someone like yourself is running 50 miles. Do you know what I mean? It'll be open to everyone. It'll be open to all abilities because I believe if, like you said, we, we've got a diet, alcohol consumption and exercise, I think it, the three main foundations make for a for a super healthy mind. And I think if we can get them right and we can get people to start moving again and just being aware of what they're eating, what they're consuming uh, and keep up, keep on top of that exercise, I think we, it's half the fight. I think it's half the battle. Ah, yeah, I, I agree with you. And I think until maybe you hear that as well off people, you don't believe it because even when you do, like, I don't know about you, but, you know, if I've had like a couple of weeks off training, whatever, and this is like, ah, oh, it's because of what you're eating. Like, you, you know, you haven't trained for a while. I'm like, ah, oh, can't be that. Yeah. Even like, even when I know it's that, it's like, nah, nah, that's not me. Like, that's not getting me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it does, yeah. You just got to, you got to fill your life with it, haven't you? And I you... think one of, one of the best things I ever done was was keep a mood diary. So I, I, I'm involved with a group called the 5AM Club and these guys are businessmen, entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurs or whatever they are. And they, they're talking about property, they're talking about business and, they're all data driven. Everything's about data. And once I was, uh, I, w- I was on one of the calls one morning, and I thought to myself, "Well, I'm going to think of my body as exactly the same as a business, and I'm going to keep as much data as I possibly can about what I eat, what I what I drink, my exercise, my mood, absolutely everything." And and when I was going through the diary at the end of the week, I would always assess at the end of the week, look for any changes in my mood, any certain patterns or whatever in regards to my diet or whatever that. that that possibly could affect mood and that type of stuff. And I found out in there that if I went three days without any exercise, it'd have a massive impact on my mood. Yeah. So, no, I just, and, and I wouldn't have known that if I didn't keep the diary. Do you know what I mean? There's certain foods that, that was used to playing up on my stomach, which would create like a, a, a bad belly and so I'd be back and forth the toilet. Yeah. And it, do you know what I mean? It's all that, all this little type of stuff that I was thinking, well, if I didn't have the data in front of me, I wouldn't have known it. So I know now specifically that, if I go three days without a, without a run or whatever, my mood's going to change. So I make a conscious effort to be out most days, every day at the moment. But even if it's every other day, do you know what I mean? At least I'm out doing something. Maybe it's a walk, it's a run, or maybe walking a dog or whatever it is. Do you know what I mean? I'm yeah. going to be excessive, but you're out in the elements, you're out in nature. Do you know what I mean? You're taking on a bit of uh, fresh air and a bit of sunlight. Yeah, I totally agree. I think getting the bl- blood pumping, isn't it? Like just getting out there, just being out in the elements and... For me, like, I find my day changes when I break a sweat. Yeah. Like, once that sweat's broke, I'm a different person. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I can be, like, the lowest of lows and, like, feel terrible about myself. Oh, crap. Oh, what about that? Oh, worrying about this and that. And then the second, like, I break a sweat, everything is, like, it's like the, the clouds open, the sun's out. Do you know what I mean? Oh, In my yeah. mind, not, you know. Yeah, and, and that's the same with me, but that's... Sorry, I go back to what you said about coping strategies, and, and that is my main coping strategy, mate, if I'm honest. If I ever feel down, if I ever feel low, even when I feel good, do you know what I mean? I'm like, get your trainers on, come on, let's go. Yeah. And and, and nothing gives me that high fr- than running. Do you know what I mean? I'm not a quick runner. I'm not. I'm not a super fit guy. I'm just someone that go out and get and get a buzz from, like you said, feeling a, the sweat run down your face and and feeling out that, that wind hit you in the face and the rain. Do you know what I mean? And and the weather. It all depends whether it's rain, shine, or whatever it is. Get the trainers on and and get out in it and. I, I, I don't feel better afterwards. I think Jack said the other week, actually, when I we had a live, he said, I've never regretted um, an exercise routine, uh, an exercise workout. And he's right, didn't he? Do you yeah. know what I mean? We, we, we've always been, we've been in the house and we're thinking, oh, shit, I ain't doing this today. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and I've spoken, and I talk, I talk myself out of it a million times. And then I go online or something like that and I flip through and I go like, Jack out pounding the roads or one of my <laughs> other buddies doing this or doing that. And I'm like, oh, shit. And, and so the trainers are on and you're off. And, and like you said the other week, you, I, you never regretted a workout. And I can totally relate to that, I think, because once you come home, you know what I mean? You feel great, don't you? 100%. You only ever regret the ones you don't do, innit? Yeah, that's yeah. definite, yeah. Yeah, that's it's so sure. weird, isn't it? Yeah, you literally, you never come back thinking like, I wish I didn't bother today. Yeah. Never, ever does that happen. Yeah. Definitely. How, how do you, I don't you know, don't want to, Go on to too much, but you said you had a heart problem when you played yeah. rugby. How, how's that like now with your training? So I've still got it, but it's just a case of um, 
that's never going to go away. Um, I've taken medication every day for the last like 20 years, I suppose. Um, it took a while, obviously, to control. I went, and it, it's strange, really, because we talk about now climbing stairs. When it first happened, I couldn't, I couldn't get up the stairs. Really? You know I mean, it was, uh, it, it hit me that hard, I suppose. So what they were saying that happened was I had some form of virus, and rather than come out in like a cold or a flu, it attacked the heart muscles, which and I got a um, condition called um, dilated cardiomyopathy. So it's a weakening of the heart muscles. Um, but and and I'll be totally honest, and it's a bit of a it's a bit of a dodgy area. We talk about people like with diets and that type of stuff. But back to back about two years ago, it was just totally off the cuff, and and I got in from work. The missus had a joint of beef in a slow cooker, and I said, "Oh, do you know all of?" I said, "I'm going to get that into me tonight now." So it'd be a shame to let it go to waste. And then from tomorrow, I said, I'm going to leave a meat alone. And she's like, oh, really? Because I was just meat mad and I check in or whatever all the time. And then since that day, I haven't touched any meat, right? And and, and so God's honest truth. Ever? Since that day, two years ago, I haven't, had a, I haven't had any meat at all, right? And the health impact that they've had on me, like phys- from a physical point of view, and especially from like my heart point of view, I, I just feel so much healthier, so much cleaner. And it is, it had such a positive impact on me. And that's not saying like everyone should do it because there's so many different diets out there. I'm just talking from my own personal experience that certainly cutting down on the meat certainly certainly helped me for sure. Do you know what I mean? And there's not yeah. many substitutes out there now. If you fancy a burger or whatever, do you know what I mean? You can crack on and get yeah. a, a meat-free one or whatever. But it definitely had a huge impact on my life, that's for sure. A lot of people say that, don't they? I had uh, Kieran Geffen, like he's a pro boxer from Abergavenny in. Yeah. And he was saying he went vegan for a couple of months leading up to a fight, and he said he was the fittest, healthiest, like strongest he'd ever been. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's definitely a strange one. Isn't it? Like, it's crazy, but because, like you said, you, sometimes a lot of it, a lot of the foods we eat, I, I think, is convenience. And please don't get me wrong; I'm no nutritionist, right? I'm just we we're driving home from work, or or you're driving home from somewhere, you think, "Oh, I'm hungry," and you see a McDonald's, or you see something, and you you stop and then you're buying a double cheeseburger, and or you're buying whatever because it's easy as on the go. When you're a veggie or, or when you're a vegan, I suppose is that's not so accessible. Do you know what I think mean? about you it a think, bit more. Well, actually, like I've committed to this now for the last however many long. It wouldn't be right if I just grab a cheeseburger or grab whatever. Do you know what I mean? And obviously, the health implications then on top of that is is like the saturated fats and all that type of stuff. Do you know what I mean? You're not banging into you yeah. always. But from a health point of view, I'd recommend it to anyone. Just to, even if you just cut it down and. Had it two days a week off yeah. it or whatever, do you know what I mean? And just see how it affects you. Like, but it, it definitely helped me out for sure. I think yeah. about a massive impact on my life in regards to my health, like definitely. I think food's one of the biggest, obviously like food and exercise, but food for me is huge as well. When I was like seven or eight, um, went to like a dietitian and like I uh, got like a gluten and wheat and dairy intolerance. So like I really was restricted growing up what I could eat. And don't be wrong, like, I still eat things I shouldn't eat now. I'm not like... Um, we all do, but don't we? I'm not like celiac or something. Yeah. It doesn't make me really ill. But if I have something like that for, like, two or three days in a row, like, all the time, do you know what I mean? Like, say, I have a McDonald's, and then, like, the next day, like, a bacon roll or something. After a few days, like, I'll start, like... My mental health will go downhill as well. It's not just, like, physical, because it just affects everything, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely, but... We are, we are what we consume at the end of the day. Yeah. We, do you know what I mean? From food... So like social media, there's, and, and I know social media gets a bashing, but there's how many positive influences now online. And I think it's down to us to just identify the fact that, right, I'm taking in way too much negative stuff, do you know what I mean? And we, we're all guilty of it. We're all guilty of just sat there and we scroll through our phones, don't we? And we aren't really taking anything in it, do you know what I mean? Yeah. We ain't, oh yeah, and, and we, lay, we lay in bed in the mornings and we flick through our phones. We go to bed in the evenings, we flick through our phones. And, and subconsciously, we are taking all this stuff in when, Really, we don't need to be, do we? So, and there's so many positive influences online that we could fill our minds with, and it's exactly the same in regards to food. And we just got yeah. to try and make the right choice. I don't know, seventy, eighty percent of the time, yeah. because none of us are perfect, do we? And I, <laughs> I'm certainly far from. Well, that's for sure. I do. I mean, I'm guilty of uh, way too much social media, me. way too much ice cream. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, just... it's good though, even being able to identify it, because I think like up until the last few years, maybe I wouldn't have even identified the things like this. And I, I think people are like having a bit of an awakening, aren't they? Yeah, In certainly. a way. It's definitely like things have changed the last couple of years. Like everyone's on different like vibration, isn't it? Yeah. And yeah. I think with with like the mental health stuff and the 
and your well-being and that type of stuff there's always new information coming out and there's always new things coming out people are always tr- pushing the boundaries and they're always trying new things and i think like if we don't move all the time so i mean we'll end up like a dinosaur as well we <laughs> do what i mean yeah, so yeah, exactly. i think it's good to keep pushing and it's good to keep evolving and if we can keep developing you know what i mean and learning new skills and uh, and like i said but uh, i'm getting stuff wrong all the time my timekeeping is absolutely shocking <laughs> i'm useless at it useless at it but I'm not going to beat myself up over it. You know what I mean? Is I've only got myself to blame. I just keep trying to improve, and, and if we keep trying to improve these little things every day, we'll soon get there in the end. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Do you do you watch like Jordan Peterson? Do you no. have you ever had much to do with him? He's like, no. he's like an American. Like, I don't know, Lou. What would you say he is? Do you watch Jordan Peterson? Yeah, he's sort of like a he's a modern day philosopher. Yeah, pretty much. He's all about like men's mental health and stuff. He's and he goes around like all these big colleges in America and stuff and talks about it. And his thing is like just get up first thing in the morning and just like make your bed and tidy your room. Yeah. Like make yourself proud of yourself. Yeah. Like little things, you know. It doesn't have to be something massive. Like you're saying, you don't have to climb Everest on your stairs. You don't have to do a 50 mile run. You can literally just overstep your own boundary slightly yeah. and like make yourself proud of yourself. Yeah. It's a win, isn't it? It's a win. It's, it's straight away you get up in the morning, you make your bed is a win. Yeah. You go into the bathroom, you have a shower, you sort yourself out. It's another win. Straight away, you've got two wins. Do you know what I mean? You go in, you get yourself dressed, you sort yourself out. It's a win. You get, you you go downstairs, like you said, you make yourself breakfast or whatever, or, or maybe you, you've you done the dishes and whatever from the night before. You've packed everything away. You come down, there's no mess down there. That's another win. It is. Do you know what I mean? You, you, you're on time for work. It's a win. It, yeah. All these little things, like you said, right? And it wasn't until a good friend of mine really highlighted the fact to me that what I was doing was winning every day and not realising do you know what I mean? He said to me, mate, do you actually realise like what you're doing? Like I said, I was keeping my, my mood diary and I was keeping all this type of stuff. And he was like, mate, we, this pe- these people not actually doing this. So everything you're doing, you're winning. Yeah. And it wasn't until he said to me, like, count these small wins. It really opened my eyes. Do you know what I mean? To these small, and we talk about it regularly, it's like that compound effect. So, it, so like it, you're making small changes that you don't really notice every day. And all of a sudden, they compound in, into one big yeah. change. Do you know what I mean? Maybe six months down the line, maybe 12 months down the line, depending on, on what your goal is. But I think these these small little changes every day, regardless of, of what they are, if we can make one small change every day, we'll certainly compound into, into bigger changes going into the future. Yeah. Yeah. And I think a good point as well is don't ever... Because like you're always looking forward, but look back and look at what you have achieved and be grateful as well, because yeah. it's so easy to skip over that and forget like where you come from. Because you're always looking at the next thing. And like for me, I was always like, I'll be happy when. Yeah. I'll be happy when. Well, I was about like, let's take a look at what you have got. Yeah. Be grateful and know, you know, you've got a right to be happy now as well, yeah, isn't it? It's, definitely. But I, I agree, always progress. Yeah. But always like, you know, do it yeah, for, for, happily. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. I think that's, we, we always want now one more thing, don't we? Do I mean, right? You've got the BMW now, but I want the, the three series or the five series or whatever yeah. it is or or the four bedroom house, or, or do you know what I mean the Gucci trainers, or whatever it is. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And all, and all these things are irrelevant, really, because, like you said, we're either looking from negative, um, ne- a negative aspect in regards to the past, or we are looking into the future. Do you know what I mean? And, and we're not really sitting back, like you said, and and practicing what we got now, like in regards to gratitude, for instance. Like you said, it wasn't until I started journaling that gratitude really came into my mind. If I'm totally fair, do you know what I mean? And, and and once you do start practicing gratitude, I found you you found yourself being grateful for all weird kinds of things. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like for instance, look what we're doing now. <laughs> do yeah, you know what I mean? it's, like yeah, it's it's craziness, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? When you actually start sitting back, and that was the first time actually, like I was grateful for like going for a run in the rain because it was like pissing down with rain outside, and I thought to myself, oh, come on, I'm not I'm not going, I'm not going. Put my trainers on, I went out, and I thought just be grateful that you've got the opportunity to be able to put your trainers on. You're physically well enough to be able to go outside, and and the rain and the wind was hitting me in the face, you know, and, and and I just remember like the big smile coming on my face because it felt it, it genuinely felt amazing, and I felt as cheesy as it sounds, you know, what I mean, I felt alive, do you know? Yeah. Otherwise, you sat in a set e and, and you're just thinking, oh, I should have gone for a run. I should have gone for a run. I should have gone for a run. Plays on your mind until just, you do it. Yeah. Yeah. I know, but and, and like you said, we got so many things to be grateful for, and and the first couple of days it was like family, friends, wife. And then all of a sudden, like you said, it, it was like 
I, was, I started opening my eyes to what was around me. Do you know what I mean? And you've got the mountains, you've got the trees, you've got the sun, you've got the birds. It's, it's all these different things that we've got around us and we've got so yeah. many so many things to be grateful for. But until we actually open our eyes up and actually look what's around us, I, I just don't think we appreciate it. May if you took someone from like the city in, in London or something and you drove them from Evervale over to Langattock over that mountain mm-hmm. on like sunrise, they'd be absolutely mind blown, oh, wouldn't know. they? Yeah, like it's, it's amazing. Incredible. You can't and believe it. It's all it. on our doorstep, but isn't it? Yeah. And like you said, we, we we've we've jumped in the car and we, we go on days out, obviously before lockdown, we've jumped in the go, we've gone to Barry Island or we've gone here for the day or we've gone to Cardiff Bay or whatever. And I think one thing that one of the positives that, that have come out of this lockdown whole thing is we've actually realised well we've gone on our doorstep as well haven't we yeah you know what I mean you've got some beautiful mountains mountains around down here you've got some cracking walks and it's the same back in up, up in Abtalady where we are from like a stone throw away and you're on the mountain do you know what I mean yeah. you've got some beautiful walks and cracking scenery up there and there's a lot of history around us as well isn't there? do you know what I mean yeah. there's, there's a lot of interesting things around us but I think if we didn't get restricted in where we could go and what we could do, do you know what I mean? Maybe that might not come to the forefront. We'd, maybe we'd still be travelling to, a, I don't know, Greece or wherever we'd be going. I know, do yeah, I mean? it's we mad, be staying really. Open in Wales, like. There's so much around. Like Since I've started running and going a bit further, like just the little tracks and trails that you never knew even existed on your doorstep, it's mental, isn't it? Yeah, there's hundreds of them about, but and like you said, especially down here in Abergavenny and where we are from, back up a valley, there's, there's tons of things on our doorstep. And until you get out and explore it, do you know what I mean? And get a feel for it. Yeah. We, we don't really realise, do we, I suppose, what actually, like, how, how lucky we are to have these things on our doorstep. Oh, yeah, we are blessed. Yeah, but you just don't think about it, and it's so easy to, like, tunnel vision on, like, what's next, and, like, how am I going to make myself happy and stuff. Yeah. And, like, I can remember I was training one day in the gym with uh, one of my mates, and I said, I was in there, and I was like, oh, I just fucking need to get my shit together. And he was, like, just looking at me funny. It's like, you probably one of the most people I know who's got their shit together. And I was yeah. like, but in my head, I'm like, yeah, nah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like far from it. You know yeah, what I mean? You, I, I suppose like, there's no one harder on you than yourself, is it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And we're constantly critiquing ourselves. We're con- constantly expecting more of ourselves. And I think one thing that I was certainly guilty of was comparing myself to others. Do you know what I mean? And, and I think, that, again, going back to social media, it's really easy to be able to go on onto Instagram or whatever and flick through and you see people like, with the nice houses and nice cars and that type of stuff. And I, I think I got sucked into that at one point, you know what I mean? Because I was thinking, well, why am I me? Do you know what I mean? Why am I doing this kind of stuff? And I kind of lost my focus, do you know what I mean? On on myself and, and who I truly am, I suppose. But now I've, I've totally gone back to my roots. And and, and it, as harsh as it sounds, do you know what I mean? These negative influences, that you, just, just fuck them off. Do you know they got to go. Just delete them, just get short of it, do you know what I mean? And, yeah. and fill your mind, like you said, with with positive things and things that you take value from, do you know what I mean? And, and fill your mind with, it, and it's just as important to fill our mind with good quality, healthy stuff as what it is as to yeah. fill our body with it as well, isn't it? Yeah, like you can't, you know, you can't climb the mountain with an anchor on your ankle, like, can you? Oh, definitely. You know I mean? That's a good one, but yeah, yeah, I yeah really you can't do it, like, can you? No, certainly not, but, and like you said, it is, there's so many times... It, there's no one harsher on ourselves than ourselves. You know what I mean? We're extremely critical of, of what we do and we always expect more of ourselves. But like you hit the nail on the head earlier on, sometimes we've just got to sit back and we think, fucking hell, I've, got, I've come a long way. Yeah. You know I mean, I actually, like, I've held the job down. You know what I mean? I've got a, 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 I've got a beautiful wife or, or beautiful family. Do you know what I mean? I'm happy. Just be happy with what I got at the moment. And and that, that, go, that doesn't go away from, please don't think I'm saying like, we shouldn't have aspirations and we shouldn't have goals and we shouldn't set these type of stuff. Do you know what I mean? Because I think that keeps us developing in a positive way. But enjoy the journey, innit? Yeah. You know I, I mean, so enjoy, well, yeah. enjoy the ride. Like, just enjoy the journey. And, and as long as we're consistent, as long as we're making progress on a daily basis, regardless of whether it's 100 miles or whether it's a centimetre. Do you know what I mean? As long as we keep progressing. And sometimes it's like pushing the car, innit? Do you know what I mean? Sometimes in order to get that car to move forward, we just need to drop it back a little bit, don't we? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And, and get our momentum. And, and as soon as we start to get our momentum, and as soon as we start progressing and moving forward, I think it's uh, the only way is up from here for sure. I think so, mate. I think so. Yeah, you're doing a great thing as well. Doing a great I thing, appreciate man. it, but I, like I said, it's, it's just one of them things that I put out there and it seems to be going from strength to strength. Uh, people seem to be um, getting involved and, and keeping it relatable, I think, and, and just keeping it up to date because there's so many things that I, I see online and I just think, oh man, 
fucking engage me like do you know what I mean get, get, get me excited or uh, and I think it's not it's not an excitable thing to be talking about it's a mental health do you know what I mean it's, it's it's a very serious thing to be talking about but we need to make it relatable to people do you know what I mean we need to we need people to think well actually like I'm gonna hold my hand up to this yeah you know what I mean and and like my mate said to me he said look are we you supposed to drive something if you're not willing to put yourself out there in the first place? And I think that's where they've come from. And and don't get me wrong, that doesn't make me like fearful. That doesn't make me um, fe- like fear of judgment is, is one of my worst things. Do you know what I mean? I I do keep thinking all the time. Like I, I we had article come out in the, in the paper today, and I, I I still haven't looked at it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because I've I, looked at it. <laughs> I still haven't looked at it, mate. Because mate, it's good. I I think to myself. Oh, shit it's just not me do you know what I mean but in order for me to we talk about comfort zones and that type of stuff like this is out of my comfort zone this type of stuff is is way out of my comfort zone but me too yeah. <laughs> but, but in order for us to progress and in order for us to get better at these type of things we need to do them don't we do yeah. you know what I mean we need, we need to dip our toe in the water then as they say yeah yeah we've obviously got this burning passion where you want to help people and like the hardest thing yet is putting yourself out there because like I wanted to do this for probably two years but only like grab the bottle and being able to do it recently and yeah it is for the fear of like oh, I wonder what like maybe that person I haven't seen for two years is going to think of this when I do that like and, which is stupid isn't it I know but yeah. the most important people that we've got around us on a daily basis do I mean we should only really be concerned about what they think about us shouldn't we do I mean but we don't like we go back to social media, we go back, like you said, you haven't seen your mucker for two years, you bumped into him downtown and the first thing you think is, I wonder if you've seen the show, I wonder if you think I'm a Berlin, what's he thinking now? <laughs> I know, and we mad, just fucking overthink it, but, and it's like, ah, brrr, it's like the hamster on the wheel, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You know I mean, and, and like you said, we just hope, we over, overthink things, we're overemphasizing things all the time, when really, we should, like we said, we should just take a step back and I'm still working on that now myself, do you know what I mean? Because it, it is one of my biggest problems is that fear of judgment you know what I mean but like we go back to like how are we supposed to drive something how are we supposed to get after something I suppose and how are you supposed to create a, a, a podcast if you're not willing to, to put your toe in the water mate you know what I mean you've got to grab a boat by the horns at the end of the day and you've got to get stuck into it I know yeah and I think as well you know as long as you're convinced in your head I'm doing this for the right reasons this is pure this is positive I'm not trying to do anything bad I'm not trying to hurt anybody you know what I mean? You're putting it all out there for a good reason and the right reason. Like, let them think what they want to think as long as you know what you're doing is right for you and pure, like, fuck it. Innit? Yeah, definitely. But I think, like, if you're accountable to yourself at, with certain things in there, do you know what I mean? It's, what you're doing here is raw, is honest. Do you know what I mean? Like you said, it's only going to have a positive impact on people's lives in it. And it goes back to, like, the tidy butt stuff that I've started up now. It's not about money. I mean, it, it never have been. Yeah. It's not about, it's about doing things for the right reason. It's going to come a time where like money's going to come into it for, for sure, but it'll be done the right way. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. That's, that's one thing that I've committed myself to. And it's one thing that Mason Jones actually said to me, look, Matthew said, we need to make sure that the money's right. And we need to make sure because like there's a, there's a super negative in, um, thing with, in regards to charities and that type of stuff. Do you know what I mean? Because we don't know where the money's going. We don't know what, what is being spent on. Do you know what I mean? And, when Mason come on board, I give him my word that, look, Mason, it's not about money. It's, it's about helping people and supporting people the best way we possibly can. And who knows, through doing things for the right reasons, it's going to, up, it's going to open doors further on down the line. Do you know what I mean? And, and that was one thing we are committed to is it's certainly not for financial gain. This is definitely for the right reasons. And that's certainly what helps me sleep at night, that's for sure. Definitely, mate. Yeah, yeah. No, I love it. It's got to be that way, isn't it? Really? Definitely, yeah. because that, that's how I get my buzz, if I'm honest. So, like, if somebody comes to me and say, Martha, I'm struggling with this, I'm struggling with that, and then a case of, but I'll help you out, but it's going to cost you 20 quid. Yeah, 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 I mean? yeah that's it. It can't be like out, that, It's it? going to cost you 35 quid. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And, uh, that, all right, you're helping someone out. You're offering them a service, but, yeah. you know I mean, uh, it's not about that at the moment. It's, yeah. it's about helping somebody out because they need help. Yeah. And that's, like... If we can help them out in regards to a group, or if I can help them out personally, that's my gift to them. Do you know what I mean? That's what makes me feel good, and that's, that's what lights my fire. Like so, yeah. That's why I'm going to keep on doing it. That's for sure. Yeah, mate. Great, like quality, and um, so. Well, I think I like, put a real positive message out there. Um, I want to thank you for coming on first of all, and uh, where can people find you? Basically, I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you very much for having me down. But like I said, it's. Uh, 
it's all new to me, this type of stuff, but I really appreciate the platform. Thank you very much, guys, for no, having mate, me down. Our pleasure, honestly. If um, if if they, if anyone was interested in joining the uh, Tidy But private Facebook group, simply just go online onto, uh, onto Facebook, search in the group section for Tidy But, and just uh, apply and I'll add you in, no problem at all. Or it's tidy underscore butt on Instagram and Matthew Creel 82 on Facebook. Right, yeah. Awesome. Nice one. Thank Cheers, you. Cheers, mate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Legend. Cheers, mate. Thank you, buddy. I'll stick everything in the uh, description on Facebook, YouTube, tag you in and whatever, and like and subscribe to the channel. Cheers, Brilliant. guys. Cheers, guys. Thank you.